Cash, it's great to have you on the show. Of course, Cash's new book, uh, maybe the best title for a book I've heard in a long time, Government Gangsters. I don't know how you get more appropriate than that. So let's just jump in, and I apologize if I ask questions that you covered maybe in the last hour. But, Cash, let me ask you a couple things. Uh, it does feel like the classified documents thing here is just kind of the tip of the iceberg, tip of the cover-up. It feels like a story not only of Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, but, but more so of the alphabet gangs here in the, in the two-tiered system of justice that we have in the country and what happened at Mar-a-Lago and the can of worms that that opened up. Uh, talk to me a little bit. Is that how you feel about it, or do you, th- you feel it should be more focused on Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, or is it, is it kind of a mix of all of that? No, it's great to be with you, and I think the focus is, we touched on a little earlier, is the focus has to be on the deep state and the two-tier system of justice. But what I didn't talk about earlier was how special counsels have impacted that entire process. Everyone knows what happened with Robert Mueller and his choreographed special counsel with Rod Rosenstein and Chris Ray. Well, Merrick Garland enters the scene, and he comes to the table and says, we're going to appoint a new special counsel. And it would have been good on paper, and in reality, if he picked someone who wasn't one of the most biased swamp monsters in U.S. history. And we're talking about Robert Hur. And let me break that down for you for a second. Robert Hur was the number three lawyer at the DOJ under Rod Rosenstein in the Trump administration. These two guys individually and collectively blockaded 17 congressional subpoenas because they didn't want the information released to the American public about the corruption at the FISA court, at the FBI, the Steele dossier, the DNC, and everything else. Robert Hur literally wrote a DOJ email, which we've made public, that said releasing the Nunes memo would be detrimental and harmful to national security. This guy, this Rosenstein protege, is now supposed to give us unbiased justice as a special counsel for the Joe Biden investigation. They've already cooked the books on this thing. <laughs> they know what the conclusion is. And what we have to do in Congress and encourage the Weaponization Committee of the federal government is to subpoena. That's the first person subpoenaed should be the special counsel along with the documentation at DOJ to expose his bias. Yeah, it seems yeah, like well, it seems like with President Trump, they always started the conclusion that they already have and then tried to work their way backwards. We saw it with the January 6th committee as well. Let me ask you a couple questions since I have you that I think your opinion, and obviously you'll have the best opinion on these things. Your, your new book is called Government Gangsters. We should have one that's called Media Morons too because I see these people in the media with the pom-poms jumping up and down for Joe Biden, and they keep telling us that there's some padding built into the Espionage Act or the Federal Records Act, or there's some padding built in that none of us know about because, oh, they were transparent right away. Or, oh, look how open they've been. Oh, look how they've done this. Uh, what is that all about? I don't know of this padding that they're all telling us is built into this. No, that's a great point, and we didn't cover it. The reason it, it, that they are going out there and saying we, Joe Biden and company, are being extremely cooperative, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Literally, I used to defend murderers and rapists and drug dealers when I was a public defender. If I went to the federal prosecutor and I said, hey, we're going to be super cooperative, that doesn't mean you didn't kill the guy. <laughs> it doesn't mean you didn't sell drugs or commit the crime. And so, but the mainstream media, and this is an important point, the administrative state, as bad as the deep state is, they can't exist without the mainstream media. So they partner up with this false narrative and say, Joe Biden's super cooperative and Donald Trump was not. I mean, one, that's fake and false. And two, it has nothing to do with the price of tea in China. But they want it because at the end of the day, when Robert Hur's done with his bogus investigation, he's going to go out there and say, oh, they were fully cooperative, so we're probably not going to charge Joe Biden. And they're going to come up with that legal fiction again about recklessness, except we now know there's no intent requirement when you're talking about the mishandling of classified information for going back 20 years. There is no comparison to President Donald Trump on this one. 20 years, six locations, thousands of pages of secrets that our commander in chief currently has now being leveraged against him by the leaders in China, Russia, and the Ukraine. And we haven't even talked about pay for play. There is no bigger scandal. Watergate doesn't even compare yeah. to this thing. Yeah. And Damon, I just wanted to say, you know, Biden only has 15 acres, so you couldn't even lay out all the documents like they did at (laughs) Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. Uh, Inadvertent. So what Cash is saying, folks, is inadvertent misplacement is not a defense to felony mishandling of national uh, defense intelligence. That's what he's saying. So, uh, Cash, I also want to let you know, I don't know if you know this, but we do not have different rules for Democrats or Republicans, different rules for the powerful or the powerless, different rules for the rich or the poor. Did you know that? Because the attorney general told us that yesterday. (laughs) 
it sounds really cool. I just wish it were true. Uh, you know, M Merrick Garland probably is the biggest government gangster of them all. And when he comes out to the American podium, uh, the American people, and says from the podium what you just said, that we don't have two-tier system of justice and that we prosecute without fear or favor, I think the good thing is, and a lot of the folks and everyone in this room agrees, is that they are seeing through that total BS. That is pure government cheese that will not be dissolved by the American but not be accepted by the American people anymore. And the more he does it, and this is another thing, the more Joe Biden goes to the podium and says, there's no there there. I didn't know what was going on. My lawyers are telling me to shut up. I can't tell you as a former federal prosecutor, that is your dream statement because you now have the criminal committing another offense about lying about his crime. We would play that in front of the jury all the time, and I would lose every defense case I've got uh, based on statements from the defendant. And in this case, make no mistake about it, Joe Biden is a criminal defendant. Yeah. Miranda Devine's uh, column yesterday called him a cornered rat and that they all look very nervous. She had some interesting <laughs> thoughts on it yesterday. Yeah. But let me get your opinion on something that I really want to know, because we've discussed this. Um, do you have an opinion on what has precipitated this, you know, quote unquote discovery? No one ever bought the idea that we were just stumbling around in the garage, putting gas in the Corvette and said, oh, hey, geez, look at this box over here. What do you think there's someone under investigation that has used this to lighten their sentence? Do, where is the precipitation for this whole thing unraveling, in your opinion? We, we talked about it before. It definitely wasn't Joe Biden's urge to have a bowl of Lucky Charms yeah. and ride around in his Corvette. Yeah. But, you know, in all seriousness... The investigation doesn't start at NARA. The investigation is the intersection of literally national security intelligence and federal law enforcement. And there's only one place that can start. That's the FBI. The FBI has been investigating. We touched on this Hunter Biden's laptop for years. But what we didn't talk about is the specificity that's been found in the Hunter Biden laptop. When you trace that back to the CCP and the Ukrainian leadership, what you find in there and what was just reported, not just by Miranda Devine and so many others that we didn't say, was the bulleted letter from Hunter Biden and his company to the oligarchs in China and or Ukraine. That bulleted letter contained classified information that could only have been gotten and produced by the exploitation of that laptop, which the FBI knew about. So we're going to hear about a lot more of the origination of this investigation, and it's going to shatter the Biden narrative that he had no idea what was going on and that he was just lost for 20 years. Yeah, and of course, the way this has been handled to that point, 79 days between when the first documents were found and when the FBI checked one of his houses, that seems like a lot of time. I mean, I know the FBI seemed comfortable with his own attorneys doing the – hey, get back to us. Let us know if you find anything. But that seems like a lot of time to uh, move things around, shred, burn, flush, whatever you got to do um, if, you're, if you're down in Wilmington, Delaware, don't you think? Well, all you got to do is – you know, we can get into the details, but you just got to do the shoe is on the other foot thing. I mean, just think about this. If Donald Trump had taken classified documents and put them in the gar garage in New York City next to one of his cars, uh, all the while his son, Don Jr., was trading secrets to the CCP, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. We would be talking about the decades in prison those guys should be doing, but because the targets are different and because this Justice Department, Merrick Garland and Chris Ray, want to politicize and weaponize law enforcement, they are going about this investigation in a completely reverse, totally un unorthodox manner on purpose. I mean, we talked about how they're letting the lawyers go in there and rummage around, but here's my more important concern. Every person over the last 20 years that touched this national security information and moved it committed a separate felony every single time. Was it at the behest of Joe Biden? Who made them do it? Who charged them with moving it? And whose names are on the releases and office spaces and everywhere else that these documents were housed? Just because they sit somewhere in a stationary location doesn't make it uh, it doesn't make you innocent of a felony. It actually makes it worse when it comes to culpability. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget the voter suppression aspect of this, right? Yeah. They didn't release Yeah, I mean, it. look, we talked, we didn't talk about that, but they've basically been rigging elections for the last six years, whether it's Russiagate, whether it's Hunter Biden's laptop, and now we have this information. The, the, the critical thing for people to realize is that they, the DOJ and FBI, knew about this way before the election for Congress and the Senate, and they hid it. 
That is the definition of election rigging like the 51 intelligence officials did with Hunter Biden's laptop calling it Russian disinformation. So our government, who supposedly is supposed to protect our constitutional republic, has been destroying it single-handedly by rigging presidential and congressional elections. We're uh, speaking with Cash Patel. He's over at the America's First Warehouse with, the da with David Zier. Did a great hour tonight special right here on Real America's Voice. Let me ask you a couple other things. I've got a couple minutes here left. What do you make generally of this revolving door that seems to have emerged between between U.S. intelligence community and a lot of them uh, in their next life ending up at uh, big tech. What do, you, what do you make of that? I think it's a complete disgrace. And Donald Trump had the answer. He put it out a couple of weeks ago on Truth Social. You have a total ban on every intelligence person that ever served in the United States government from going and working for big tech, for Twitter, for Facebook, for YouTube and Google. A total and complete ban. So they don't get their seven-figure paydays and their golden parachutes. And I know that hurts a lot of the men and women who served the intel community, but that's the only solution going forward. Because look at what they did. The people that used to be at the FBI and DOJ and CIA then went to FBI, uh, Twitter and Facebook, and we now know from the Twitter files, had weekly meetings with their pals back at the FBI who told them what to censor leading up to a presidential and congressional elections. The very censorship of free speech and, and election rigging can only occur with the government and their deep state actors, big tech company and the radical media. And they have that trifecta down pat, but I think we're breaking it down. Um, let me ask you one last thing here. President Trump has obviously announced his run for 24. It's gonna be in South Carolina, gonna get out there, be on the move. As we think about an, another Trump administration, and I, you know, I look at people like Rick Grinnell and I look at people like you, rock solid, no, sonset, no nonsense, get to the truth, understand their allegiance to the, to the man they work for, they work at the pleasure of the president. Um, and then I see some of the others who are on The View and writing books and backstabbing them at all, at all turns. Do, should we expect in another Trump administration for him to treat personnel uh, like he treated policy, like his discernment between who he can keep close and who he shouldn't? Do you think that will be better in a second time around? It'll be 180 degrees different because the people that are going to be running uh, those policy and personnel decisions are some of the folks you just named. And the people we're not going to rely on are the morons on The View or Oprah or whatever other show they're going to nowadays. The personnel exists. And more and more people are gravitating towards, run, towards serving in a future Trump administration because they found out that the national security of America is the only thing that matters at the end mm. of the day. All right, amen to that. Cash Patel, David Zier, love having you. Thanks for giving us a few moments.